to Fine Tuned Females. How are you, Tata? I'm doing well. How are you? I am great. And I'm really excited today because we're going to talk about not only is fitness my favorite thing, but so is nutrition. So today we have a fantastic guest. We're going to be talking with Mary Donkersloot about nutrition, especially for women over <clears throat> a certain age, like 40 and 50, because it gets complicated. It really gets complicated. It's yeah. so tricky. Well, let's get a little bit about your background now that we've started and Tell us, you're from Iowa, and what was it like growing up in Iowa and then getting into the nutrition world from there? Well, listen, I um, always had a love of food and eating and cooking, and I decided to become a registered dietitian at a pretty young age, and of course it was a circuitous route, but now I have, for many years, had a private practice in Beverly Hills where I do one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling, and I help people with diabetes and weight issues, and I see a lot of women in that age group, 40s to 50s, and I, I prefer them you know, the the younger, the better, uh, so that we can really start to, to deal with some of these things. I work with eating disorders. I work with children and overweight. I have to say, I love what I do. I love to help people. And, uh, and, and, and eating healthfully is so much more complicated than it was when I was growing up in Iowa, where food was just, and eating was just a part of life. It, it was simple. And I, I think it's interesting, because today, there is this sense of, okay, why are so many more people overweight than when, when we were younger? Especially in Iowa. I yes, have been there. Especially <laughs> in Iowa. And, but everywhere, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, is it that there's a lack of willpower? No, that's not what has changed. What's really changed is the food environment. So as we were talking about beforehand, there's so much more processed food. Right. And I just saw a figure that like 57% of what Americans eat is ultra processed Absolutely. foods. Absolutely. And that and fast foods. And fast foods, which many are ultra processed. Right. You know, the, the drinks. But it could be bars. A lot of people I see eat bars. They're ultra processed. Lots of sugars. Uh, right. Lots of sugar and, mm -hmm. and lots of oils and, mm -hmm. and not such good kinds of oils. Right. So, in fact, oils have increased more than sugar has mm -hmm. in the last number wow. of years, which has surprised me when I read that data. What do you mean oil has increased? You mean the amount that the, people are consuming? The amount that people are consuming. Soybean, mm. safflower, oh, uh, no. corn oil. But these are things that you might find in crackers, in packaged cookies. And, and they may say... I know they could say organic, but they, they still may be processed foods. Right. Like gluten-free foods. Right. So you see all these gluten-free, and you think, oh, there's something. I should get gluten-free because right. there must, it must be a good thing. When, in fact, they may be full of sugar and unhealthy oils. Is there such a thing as a healthy <clears throat> oil, or are they all just fat? No. Good question. There is such a thing as a healthy oil, and probably the oils we want mostly, olive oil is kind of my go-to standard. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what, what's yeah, yours? I love olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah. I use uh, olive oil and avocado oil, uh, monounsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats. That's, I, I get scared by the poofas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting thing. Um, PUFAs. Actually, I just attended a lecture at UCLA yesterday. Oh, well, let's back up and tell everyone. Oh. So a PUFA is a polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acid. acid. Right, right, and right. And the problem with them is that they have multiple double bonds and right. then that they can go rancid faster. They can faster. get oxidized, yeah. Yeah, whereas saturated fats and monounsaturated fats are safer as far as oxidation goes. And Right. So you can explain that, that more. That is true. Um, that is true. I, I, the issue really is not to go out and eat more saturated fat or eat more monounsaturated fat. The issue is to have a diet that's balanced in fat or in yeah in fats and proteins and carbohydrates and that's the big difference between how we ate growing up in Iowa and I'm sure here in California too that it was balance okay so so I grew up on a farm we ate pork, we ate beef, we ate potatoes with gravy every day mm. and we ate a vegetable mm -hmm. what was in okay. the gravy uh, whatever mm -hmm. juices from the meat right. okay. and yeah. white flour and yeah. a little water from the potatoes. Right. Exactly. That's how you make gravy. That's right. Okay. I used to make the gravy. Right. Okay. No one was overweight. Okay. I'm not saying that's what we want to go back to, but in terms of a weight issue, it's not so much what you eat as how you eat. Portion control. Well, yes, but we didn't eat big portions then. Right. That's what I mean. Exactly. Right. So when you think, okay, this is another subject. Portion control. When you think portion control. We eat now more food than our grandparents ate. That's for sure. We eat more. We eat that. more avocado toast. We eat more kale chips. We eat more bars. We eat more. 
period, right. because portions are big. And when you've been raised with this high sugar, high processed food, or even just bigger portions, mm -hmm. you have what I call portion distortion, okay? Meaning you think, oh, gee, that's, that's what I should be eating. Right. And we eat with our eyes. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that I shy away from diets is because they don't really address the real issue. You, you could temporarily deviate from your norm and do some kind of a wacky diet. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about issue, right now we're specifically talking about weight gain. Yes, weight gain. Um, but, but really, in terms of weight gain, what you really want to work towards is dealing with eating the right kinds of foods in the right amounts. And so it, it's, it's about what you choose and the structure within which you, you eat. Right. And that structure has changed. We used to eat breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. That's right. how we eat. Now, people are eating all the time. Right. The, yeah. that, 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 that's kind of gotten... Well, I agree with that. And I grew up in Canada, uh -huh. and my parents were very healthy. My mother, yeah. you know, she insisted that we start with our salad because you get fuller and then you're not eating such a big portion. Right. You're always having a meat, you're always having a protein right. or a fish. Right. And we just didn't have leftovers. Yeah. She cooked enough for everybody to right. have a portion and that was it. Yes, beautiful. And I'll bet you, I'm, I'm guessing, that she didn't have to say eat, eat it this way. That's just how it, it, was, was, presented. Just how it was presented. So when you have a child, because I have parents coming to me with overweight children often, you don't have to talk to them about saying, somebody said to me recently, well, I tell my 11-year-old girl that she should slow down so that she can let her, her, her tummy catch up with her brain. Listen, that's not something that's easy for any of us, let alone if you're 11. Right. Okay. <laughs> what you don't do is take that 11-year-old girl to a restaurant where she gets an enormous plate of pasta yeah. and a sugary drink yeah. and then try to her let her stomach yeah. and her brain connect. No, it's about how you feed your kids. Absolutely. It's the parent's job to determine what food the child has access to. And then you do it exactly like your mother did. You find your stopping place naturally. Right. You didn't grow up thinking, oh, am I full now? No, you, you, because of the design of the meal right. and the fact that there wasn't a huge portion, right. you got it. Right. And exactly. that's such a gift your mother gave you. Another you thing. Thank your yeah, mother. I do. Like, right I really now, do. She's, she, she was great. You know, the only, she used to also say to eat slowly and chew your food yes. well, uh -huh. you know, because right. people tend to inhale their food and right. then they just want more and more. Right. I remember saying to my son, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> yeah. That's what we used to say. Is he like, you know, but practically choking. You were right. that he was going to choke right. because he would eat so fast. Yeah. Well, you guys missed what a lot of the immigrant families went through, which were like my family, um, you know, Jewish immigrants from Europe. And, you know, they dealt with like the Holocaust and yes. they dealt with, then they were out here and then they dealt with the depression. Right. So uh, for most people, not you two, but just mo most everyone else. <laughs> and I'm usually the exception to the rule. But in this case, I'm the rule. And that was my family was like, finish what's on your plate. Finish yes. what's on your plate. Yes. And they always wanted you to eat everything. And yeah. because I was a really finicky eater as a kid, and I just didn't like to eat food for some strange reason, they would entice me by just giving me, so that I would eat, sugary food, junk food, pasta, right. fast food, mm -hmm. so that I would eat anything. Mm -hmm. Or else, you know, they mm -hmm. would just sit there and I would just wait them out. I'm like, no. Right. You know, that is, I hear that a lot too. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's a real catch 22. The more you give kids sugary things, the less they're going to eat a green bean or mm -hmm. a piece of broccoli. So, so I, I try to work with, with parents who come to me and say, my kid will only eat macaroni and cheese and hot dogs and quesadillas and tacos. That's, that all, my, <laughs> that's all my kid will eat. Okay. Why? Kids eat what they're familiar with. So if, if that's, somehow they got, act, my, my son didn't have macaroni and cheese only because every time he went for a play date, he got macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, that was he, my he, life, yeah. Get it yeah. outside, you're not yeah. getting it in the house. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's funny because when he was, he was when he was student of the week in preschool, they said, what's your favorite food? And he said, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, yeah. I haven't even ever fed it to yeah. him. So, not my son. <laughs> <laughs> but, but as it turns out, now he's 20, he's away at college, and he's 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 FaceTiming with me, showing me what he's cooking. He's <laughs> making Brussels sprouts with pecans mm. that he got from his grandmother in Louisiana. She mm. sent him a bag of pecans. Nice. And he's he's cooking zucchini, he's chopping his garlic. I said, What's that for, honey? He says, Oh, I'm just chopping up some garlic to saute this zucchini. Mm. Now, his girlfriend is very lucky. Yeah. She she loves the fact that 
he, not only does he cook, he cooks vegetables. Why? Amazing. Because he learned that from his mother. Well, of course. I'm taking some credit right? here. Right? No, absolutely. Oh, wow. I believe yeah. in we, that. We, be, we yeah. went beyond the macaroni and cheese, and he learned, because you really don't want to harangue kids about things. Right. Kids will eat what they're familiar with. Absolutely. If they've never seen a tomato, they're not, the first time they say, I don't like tomatoes. You ignore it. Exactly. And then it resurfaces and it, it resurfaces. And I remember one time when my son was about 12 or 13 and he went away with another family to a lake in Wisconsin and he came back and he said, Mom, now I eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he, he hadn't eaten salmon. He ate salmon when he was little and then he didn't like it. And then he decided he liked it again. But you just want to, you don't want to stop serving it, but you want to... Um, let it resurface. Okay, oh, we got off the subject of kids. Let's get back to the subject of women who, from 40 to 50. Yeah, and we were talking about oils, too, so do you want to finish up what you were saying about yes. the monounsaturated fats, the yes. PUFAs, and the... Yes, and, and this is actually a little bit of a research that's very hot off the press, because I heard this lecture from a Canadian woman oh. yesterday, mm -hmm. um, who was a, a very uh, brilliant scientist, who spoke about the problems with some of the N3s or omega... I'm sorry, N6s. So the, in terms of unsaturated oils, we have omega-3s, which we know are in salmon, and they, they're helpful mm -hmm. to us, and they decrease inflammation, and the omega-6s, which may help with inflammation, but the problem with our diet is that we get so many of the omega-6s and not enough of the right. omega-3s. She was talking about the link between those changing the biodiversity in the microbiome and in a negative way, whereas she was talking about saturated fats actually increasing inflammation slightly but then making a correctional factor. And the thing about saturated fat, the thing is, again, it is moderation because it's very easy. The goal is 20 grams of saturated fat a day. It's very easy to get that mm -hmm. real fast. So mm -hmm. it's not like you want to just start eating a lot of butter and steak. Right. And no, well, because let's we give also the audience an idea of 20 grams of saturated fat would look like what? Well, let's say um, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of butter. I think has um, seven or eight grams of saturated fat. So wow. uh, yeah. So two and a half tablespoons uh, of butter. Yeah, but you're not going to eat all of your saturated fat because, like, olive oil has a couple grams of saturated right. fat. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get it from other foods. Like chicken, fish. Yeah. Fish has some saturated sure. fat. It's not just beef yeah. that has it. Right. It's a continuum. Mm -hmm. So beef would be higher in saturated fat. So we certainly do know that we want to choose, you know, more foods that. Aren't aren't higher in in fat, right? Um, and then I've read a lot about the uh, the the proportion between mm -hmm. the omega sixes and the omega threes, and then yes. you know in our fast foods we have yes. too much of the omega six, That's not right. enough omega three, and we really need. I believe that it was like these uh, nutritional anthropologists yes. were looking at what our ancestors mm -hmm. ate, and their ratios were anywhere from like sixteen to one to six to one yes. of the. So basically, what we're talking about is how much more omega threes you really should have versus omega sixes. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell people like what they well, should look for. for Okay. Avoiding? Yes. Yes. Because I, I think at a certain point it gets too complicated. Yeah. So what we shift to is eating whole foods. Okay. Okay. So if you're getting those omega, those things we don't want so much of from processed packaged foods. Yeah. So the omega sixes okay. are more in packaged foods. Yes, they are. And fast food in pr preparing and you know what you cook your French fries in and 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 grain based desserts. So if you buy a a muffin, mm -hmm. uh, or and it doesn't could be from you know a healthy place, whatever. Whole Foods. If it, it looks does, like a Hostess cupcake, stay away. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 especially if it if it has a halo health effect, it may not really be. So. Um, oh yeah. So let, we should explain what the halo effect is. Meaning. S some foods like that you might think are like a, a you know a bar you might think it's a healthy thing mm -hmm. and it because it, it says high protein right yeah. but really maybe it has a lot of other things in it right. that we don't necessarily want to eat yeah I'll just make a brief explanation so the health halo is a marketing thing yeah and they put something like gluten free and you think mm -hmm. oh this must be healthy mm -hmm. or they'll say heart healthy right. or wholesome food on mm -hmm. the package mm -hmm. and then it gives you the health halo thinking that this is a healthy Absolutely. food to eat yeah. when it's not so that's like a term that's used in right. the health field. Meanwhile, people are saying, are bananas too sugary? I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. listen, eat the banana. Yeah. You know? That's what we should talk about because people always wonder, does fruit make me fat? Yes. No, 
<laughs> Probably not. No. Um, uh, so, you know, I do have this show that I do called Smart Eating Show, mm-hmm. right? So when my son went off to college, I needed a project. And I have my practice, and I love my clients, and I this is all good. But I wanted to do, it was actually my hairdresser, it's a very Beverly Hills story, mm-hmm. who said, <laughs> Mary, you should be doing social media. So I, he said, I'll help you. Terrence Parker. Mm. Love that guy. Uh, So he helped me get the name Smart Eating Show and set it up on YouTube. And he started, he got me some lights and we got a camera and he started shooting these little videos for me. And now every Friday I post a one or two minute little nutrition snippet called Smart Eating Show. And yeah, I did one called Can You Over Fruit? <laughs> okay, I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw most of yours, but yeah, okay. Yeah. They're really easy to binge watch. Yeah, they're, they're like, I don't know, 50 or 60. He's, he's a junior, second semester junior, so I've been doing one once a week for a long time. Right. There's a lot of them. So, um, yeah, so Can You Over Fruit? Well, yes, you can, but this is where it comes into play of not all diets are for everybody. So for example, if you have a high a tendency towards type 2 diabetes or a hemoglobin A1C that's a little high, which is an average of your blood sugar over three months, you might not want to overdo the fruit. So it really comes down, you know, two, three, four pieces of fruit a day is great, but most not that many people over over fruit. Right. Some people do. Right. You can with but, grapes. Yes, I've seen Jim over grape. Yes. So, <laughs> but 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 again, it really, we so we want some of the some of the guidelines suggest you know nine or ten servings of day of fruits and vegetables. I like to see that be a preponderance of vegetables and uh, you know not as many fruits. Which which is interesting. How do you eat more vegetables? <clears throat> I usually try with my mouth. Well, that's you are clever, Jill. <laughs> you are clever. You I got try. Me. But but I see a lot of uh, 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 parents who will say, "Oh, we have broccoli every night." Well, it's steamed broccoli, dry with nothing on it. Okay, now. I like to take my broccoli and steam it and then chop it up and saute it with some olive oil and garlic. Mm, and then kids are gobbling it down. Right. So I, I have done at times little demonstrations at my home when people really think they can't eat more vegetables. I say, you come to my house. We'll have a little cooking oh, session. Yeah. yeah, people love it. Right. And I had a mother in tears once because her child's like eating these cooked carrots with a little olive oil and some fresh thyme. Mm. Like, woohoo! Yeah, you know, it changes the whole dynamic. It does. If right. you make vegetables taste good, right. you take those cherry tomatoes and you drizzle them with olive oil and toss them with a little bit of salt and you put them in the in a 350 degree mm. oven for 40, 45 minutes. They blister. Mm, they pop. Make me hungry. They, 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 they're sweet. <laughs> They're like candy. They're delicious. They're like candy. Oh, yeah. So listen, I, I think uh, when we get back to what's the bottom line here, we want to eat more whole foods. Mm-hmm. And that that means more vegetables. And and that means um, it, for our grains, we want high fiber grain or, or starchy foods. Right. Now, I have been called the bean queen <laughs> because I like beans. Right. Oh, the lectin guy, Dr. Dr. Yeah, Gunn, he hates I, you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm not crazy about it when physicians get oh. over and then they start. It worked for me, so it'll work for you. And right? I, no. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not saying that for so, you, you cut out all those carbohydrates, you're going to lose weight. I can tell you That's that. That's for sure. Yeah, but I don't know if it's sustainable. But beans are one of the m- most healthy foods. Now. If you have irritable bowel syndrome, uh, that's another story. So again, not all diets are for all people. Right. But if you want to be vegan or you want to be vegetarian, you got to eat beans. You got to. Right. You got to yeah. eat beans. Right. So one of the things that I did um, this last uh, year, I challenged myself on Instagram to um, a smart eating show to eat a serving of beans every day for 30 days, and I documented it. Wow. And it was great. How did you feel? Ah. Oh, I felt fantastic because when you have, like, I actually just had lunch at La Pan today, mm-hmm. and I had these quinoa cakes that come with these little bit of garbanzo beans. And oh, sort of, okay. It was, it was so delicious. I love quinoa and beans together. Yeah. It was really, it was really delicious. But, you know, just, I just had that lunch about an hour ago. I feel great. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, I feel satisfied. I don't I feel like I'm going to be, you know, at four o'clock looking for something. Right. I can wait till dinner. Right. And, and that's a great thing about a meal. If you can find that balance of protein, carbohydrate, and fat, and, uh, and, and the quantity that's appropriate, then that's, that's how you manage your weight. Yeah. But once you start to micromanage and count calories and go on this diet or cut out this food group, 
it can get in your head and be a little crazy making. And doesn't your body kind of tell you, like, I always feel like... An, an and intuition? Always, an intuition, like, I'll tell Jill, you know, when I'm when I'm feeling weak or I'm feeling mm-hmm. something coming on, I mm-hmm. actually crave red meat. Mm-hmm. I feel there's a weakness in my system. And usually if I have that red meat for dinner, I hey, feel hand. stronger. Hold my hand, Anita. Okay. No. Sorry. Okay. I love you. I <laughs> Is love that you, from but- iron? <laughs> No, because... I'm just an example. Like, whatever yeah, I'm craving, sometimes, right. you know, it's a thing that... There was a very interesting study that was done with very young children years ago in Europe somewhere, I don't remember where, where they took kids who were in a, in a um, who were um, orphans, mm-hmm. and they, they, they somehow came up with this theory that they would like what it was that they craved. No, that was because that was all that they had. Right. Okay. No, but I'm not talking no. about craving junk yeah. food. I'm talking no, no, about, no. like, if, yes. you know... No, no, if you... No, it, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So if you're anemic, you might really have a hard time walking up the stairs. Um, but if you're premenstrual, you might just be tired because there's a hormone shift. Right. You might need a nap. Right. It may not mean you need an iron supplement. Right. But the best way to check that is to go to your doctor. Yeah. And if you think you're anemic, that's a big deal because those hemoglobin transport oxygen to the tissues. Mm. And if you don't have enough hemoglobin, you're not getting oxygen to your tissues. Mm-hmm. You're not feeling very good. She's right. not anemic. No. She's just a you seem just fl- fine to me. She's though. a fragile but flower. Actually, it's true <laughs> that you mentioned prevents because yeah. when I'm in that week, yes. that's when I need more meat. I feel I feel uh-huh. better. It strengthens yes. me. Okay, then do it. And then the week after okay. I'm fine, I can okay. go back to my normal. Do you think that's in her head? Um... Here's what they say about premenstrual cravings, that people tend to crave what it is that they like. So some people say they crave pizza. Some people say they crave pasta. Some people say chocolate, sugar. Yeah, pasta. It, it just depends on mm. what you like. Yeah, right. that's definitely, I just crave what so, I, what I. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, I do crave all the chocolate and stuff, but I'm saying the thing that makes me feel stronger and better yeah. is just having like a piece of steak or something, right. you know, and a salad. Yeah, the best deal, way to deal with cravings is to, first of all, get enough sleep. Yeah, well, that's a... Okay, and, and, and second of all, to maintain meal structure. Mm-hmm. And I like to say, and I do this with my clients, always know what and when you're going to eat next. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so if if I, I knew today that I was having lunch at La Pan at 1 o'clock, so I had my breakfast when I had my breakfast, but I, I wasn't going to eat something before then because I knew I had that. Mm-hmm. Now, I know I'm going to have dinner at around 6, 6.30 tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat at 4 o'clock because... I don't want to spoil my dinner. Exactly. Okay. Right. Now, if you're chaotic and you don't know what's coming and going, it's easy to just grab something here and there because we live in this environment. I just went and filled my car up with gas. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a veritable market there. Right. I, I, I'm not going to impulse buy. Because you didn't I, get the Slim Jims? I didn't get the Slim Jims. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to buy some because I know what I'm eating next. Right. Do you see what yeah. I mean? But so do you snack between meals? Like, will you have an apple or a yogurt or something? Well, like- snacking is should be on a on on a, an as needed basis. Right. So there was this this. Um, this myth perpetuated by the snack food industry, mm-hmm. I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, mm-hmm. it, the more you eat, the more your metabolism's going to boost. Yeah. H- honey, wishful thinking. <laughs> I, I wish the more I ate, the bigger my tap. No, right. that's not how well, it We got to look at who's funding the study. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like the Quaker Oats breakfast study. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so, so no, uh, uh, sometimes I do eat between meals, um, but, I, I, but the purpose of the snack is to tide you over to the next meal. Right. So 100, 200 calories might just be, you know, just a few nuts might, right. might do it. I keep, always keep those little Trader Joe's packages yeah, of, me too. <laughs> of, of unsalted raw, almonds. And yeah, yeah, the raw ones, I keep them in my, next to my desk at the office. Does the trick. It does, but tea. So, yeah, interestingly enough, in, in China, uh, before 2004, they noted in 2004 is when their eating patterns changed, when they became snackers hmm. like us. And before that, they would only drink tea or water between meals. Right. Ah. And then they wanted to be like us. And, and the snack food, I, I'm not sure how this happened, but they began to become more snacker, snacky, and that changed the weights. Well, food can become like an addiction, too. Yes, you can get can. addicted to, y- yes. you know, it doesn't mean you need it. That's right. right. I yeah, did have right. one of my clients who was having some nuts or grapes for a snack in between mm-hmm. meals, and so I had to get her off. She, ne- she needed to lose quite a lot of weight. She uh-huh. wanted to lose like 50 to 75 pounds, yeah. which we got a large chunk of that off, but I had her drink green tea, and I didn't know about that China study yes. but it just said to me if she's at work and yes. wants to snack well that little bit of ecgc and the mm-hmm. um uh, and the caffeine a little mm-hmm. bit of caffeine yes, in there really helps. will 
yeah, will help with her hunger. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, you know, even when even without exercising more than she already did, she was losing yes. weight by replacing the snack yes. with the green tea. Yes. It's a miracle. Which which brings me to another point, Jill, that I think is really important. And again, this is an alternative to diets, right? And that is changing food preferences. Mm. Okay? So let's say you're used to eating a scone in the morning or or a muffin or, right. or a bagel. Right. It's it's really hard to change that. Yeah. But it can be done. And in order to change, you have to have a reason to change. And then you have to find something that you like. Then you have to practice it, just like exercise. Yep. Right. The first time you do it, it's awful. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. painful. Yeah. I take Jill's class. It's hard. <laughs> so, but the more you do it, the more you get hooked on it. It's yeah. like, oh, it's Wednesday. I got to go to Jill's class. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's with it's like that with food too. So I like to have a. a pro I grew up eating a bowl of cornflakes in the morning. Yeah. That's what we ate. They didn't yeah. give you sugar pops? Uh, we didn't do that. No, <laughs> Thank God. Did we. Thank Your God. mom was better than mine, but anything yeah. to make Jill eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but now I really like uh, this kefir flax, little protein powders. I put some blueberries in mine this morning. I love that in the morning mm -hmm. and I look forward to it. Right. So it's, it's, it's a, ch it's a food preference that I changed. Right. And, and that takes time. It takes intention. And but you can do it, right. and, and it's helpful to have a support system, and and not everybody's going to want to drink something in the morning. You, right. you might want an egg, you might want a piece of toast right. with peanut butter on right. it, or yeah. whatever. But I, that's one of that's what a, a registered dietitian can do mm -hmm. to help you come up with a plan that works just for you, mm -hmm. the way that Jill does as a trainer mm -hmm. to help people come up with an exercise regimen that works just for them. So let's recap what we've learned so far, because we're going to talk now about women over. 40 and 50 Good idea. Yes. next but just to to recap so kids are getting heavier apparently mm -hmm. and that's because of how the food industry has changed what's in our food and we're eating too many processed foods and so we need to look more at eating more whole foods which everybody hears all the time, but what people don't realize what's so bad about some of these foods that are packaged is the ratio of the types of fats. Right. Because That's right. label reading is the most important thing I think people can do. Well, and cooking at home. Yes. You get in that kitchen, girls. Right. Well, yeah. there are no labels on the food that you cook at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't see a label on the last bag of broccoli I bought. Yes. So, I, so we should just recap that. So it's mm -hmm. the types of oils that yes. people are eating. So not to eat more monounsaturated fat or more saturated fat because mm -hmm. they might be less rancid or oxidized less. Uh, you just replace it with the better one. So the monounsaturated fats like the... Um, uh, I use avocado oil. I really like that. Yeah. It's mild. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah, and then the um, olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah. And are there any other? What do you? What's your take? Big trend. What's your take on the coconut oil? It's just, uh, the big trend of that. Yeah, you know, trends are. Mm. <sighs> How many times have I been asked that? Okay, I, I, I again, it's a saturated fat. I'm not rushing out to eat more saturated fat. Mm. I think if you want to use it in your Thai food from time to time, that's fine. But you know, I think it's pretty good for your skin, mm -hmm. maybe your hair. Right. Uh, am I going to eat coconut? No, uh, yeah. quite frankly, no. Right. Now, if you're vegan and you're not getting any saturated fat from animal sources, then I think the coconut coconut oil is probably fine. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever it takes to get you up to, to your, your goal of saturated fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, th I I think a tablespoon of it gets you to half of what you might wow. want to have in a day. Now, some people might argue that those saturated fat uh, values maybe aren't what we should be looking for. Listen. My advice to patients is evidence-based. This is the science we have now. It may change, mm -hmm. but right now this is the evidence we have in terms of heart disease. Right. We know that saturated fat clogs the arteries more than monounsaturated mm -hmm. fats. Okay, We know that. So I'm going with that. Right. that. I'm going with that. I mean, the best diet would be the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is well, there's not really a definite. That's the problem. Is what is the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, right. Because they don't even eat it there anymore. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just like all all we know to go on is more grains, more nuts, more whole grains, more nuts, and more olive oil. Yeah. But they have whenever they do a study, a nutrition study, it's like every scientist comes up with their own version of a Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet. So is there yeah. really a definition? Like we yeah. know with the keto diet that it's X amount percentage of fat. It's about the macros. Right, right. We know on paleo, it's a type of elimination diet. Yeah. We know on the FODMAP diet, it's an elimination diet mm -hmm. but what is the definition like how much olive oil how much nuts but how much listen, grain nobody's counting 
you know, nobody's really counting. So it's we an ad, want, ad lib want, diet. Well, but we want to, uh, even I'm a dietitian. I don't count my fat grams or my calories. Mm-hmm. You don't uh, count calories. Are you kidding me? No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Never. Okay. Wow. That's Never. awesome. No, no, no. I don't ever advise counting calories. Right. Then you no. do portion control. It's got to be one yeah. or the other. I mean, okay. we don't, our brains don't usually work that way. Right. Unless there's an eating disorder. I have my eating disorder patients who count calories and I work with them to stop. Okay. <laughs> because you want to, you want to get that sense of hunger and fullness. Right. Sometimes we eat a little bit more. Sometimes we eat a little right. bit less. And, uh, and we want to learn to be able to respond to that. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with I that. I find when I overeat, I look at how many calories I ate and I'm like, oh my God, I really didn't need 2,500 calories today. No wonder oh. I'm so full. Oh. And then I'm like, all right, tomorrow, 1,800 calories because that seems oh. to be my number. No, but you I know what's interesting? I, no. I did my genetic test uh-huh. and uh, so, so a couple of years ago and I found, and there's, they're always, you know, as they're deconstructing more genes and they're finding out more stuff and they're running more uh, studies, I found out that in my genetic profile, it doesn't matter whether whether I eat a low fat or a low calorie or a low carb diet, no matter what diet it is, my body just responds to how many calories I'm eating. And that's what it said on my genetic report. Well, I'm not going for that genetic report. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm I, really I into the whole genetic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I found everything except for one thing true when I read my genetic profile. Was just, mm-hmm. These crazy mysteries of my body were solved, like things that I had no idea. Like, why does this happen to me? And then, oh, there it is. I have a gene for that weird thing. And all, so all these mysteries got solved. The only thing that they were wrong about is I wake up a little bit earlier than they say. They said in, genetically, I'm predisposed to waking up at 7.05, and I wake up more at like 6.50, naturally. <laughs> They're 15 minutes off. I mean, I believe that it all comes from your upbringing. You are in control as a mother of how you're going to raise your child and what they're going to eat. Now, my mother didn't give me options. She said, you don't like it, don't eat. And eventually you'll get hungry enough and you'll eat what I put on the table. And she gave me a portion and that was that. And that became my food addiction. Uh, It was Mm -hmm. programmed into me. So as an adult, I didn't crave junk food as much and all that as a child that was brought up with that. Right. Again, we eat what we're familiar with. Right. So, yeah, my son never had cereal. To right. this day, he, he doesn't eat cereal. I never had sodas, and yeah. I don't like right. sodas. Same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. So, you know, but then you change after 40, and your yeah. hormones go weird on well, you. Well, you change also. So, yeah, we do change because, as I said, I've we all, our food preferences change. Right. But what we want to try to do is change them in a positive way. So that we're used, like, for example, one of the things I like to do is make one of my meals each day a salad. I like a big right. kind of, lots of vegetables, maybe a salad, grain bowl, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, a preponderance of vegetables. Mm-hmm. And with a healthy dressing and a protein of some kind, mm-hmm. whether it's beans or whether it's chicken or shrimp or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yum. So I, I like to do that. Right. I, and and that's, that helps me to get closer to that five or six cups of vegetables right. a day. Because otherwise, how do you do it? Right. It's not by counting calories. No. You that's 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 what you do and so yeah so yeah we want to work towards having meal patterns right. that suit us right. and eating at certain you know a meal should last you three or four hours yes and mm-hmm. so if you're if you're if your next meal is seven hours away you're going to need a snack of course yeah, yeah so definitely. um yeah. And I find if I don't get the chance, if I'm running around all day and I haven't eaten my vegetables, yes. I might take a couple handfuls of spinach, throw them in a blender, yeah. a few pieces of apple because I want a little sweet oh, too. Oh, that's a good idea. And I put some, you know, maybe I'll put some water in there. Yeah. I, don't like to, I don't like anything too sweet. Uh-huh. But that's how I'll supplement right. and I'll drink that. What kind of apples do you use? Um, well, I like the sweet ones, the Fujis. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, they're yeah. not the best, but at yeah. home we used to have those bittery ones. That, yeah, I, I like the Honey Crisp right the now. The Honey Crisp is yeah, delicious. They're pretty, they're That's the second tasty. favorite. Right. We actually had a green apple with some almond butter on it last night for mm. dessert. It was green. It was really good. That is a nice combination. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it's. I, I like to try to get away from so much sweetness because, for example, you were talking about grapes, or you were talking about your your partner eating grapes. Yeah. Grapes are used to be a delicacy, and and some of them were they weren't all so sweet. Mm-hmm. And you'd see the Romans eating grapes, right. and they were <laughs> being hand fed. Yes, <laughs> but but now they're all changed so that they're very sweet. Yeah. 
I like them, and of course I do too. I but eat them. Yeah, yeah. All and, and fruits and vegetables have been genetically modified so that they taste better, this right? Is, this is what we have. They've been yeah. This is where we are. Too. This is where we are, yeah. and this is what we do. We have to do the best with what we can because what we don't want to do is send the message out as like, oh, it's also impossible. Forget it. You know, just give a throw your hands in the air. Well, just our grandparents' the, generation, the food yeah. wasn't as palatable. They, you know, food science has really changed things. Yes. yes. But yes. then when you're getting into your hormonal changes later on. Yes, let's talk about yeah. that. Then things start to change. Right. Along about 45, 50-ish, mm -hmm. uh, hormones change. Right. Progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, those things change. And so you experience a number of changes in terms of your physicality. And that also kind of coincides with with losing some lean mass after mm -hmm. the age of 30 you right. start to your lean mass starts to decrease a little bit which is why you need to shift your workout routine to a little from cardio to a little bit more weight training mm -hmm. right Jill a lot sarcopenia yeah. is right the so. worst thing I think that happens to us <laughs> right so 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 that happens um, so uh, yeah and and so and uh, when we have when we when the estrogen is less fat cells actually make estrogen and you know one theory is that you your your fat cells are making uh, oh. you, you know extra estrogen okay. that's partly part of the reason for the weight gain but the weight gain can happen so it's really a good idea to to eat less and our our caloric requirement decreases every decade really and that's oh. the one bit of information we all know but people often don't respond to it. Like, we know every decade we need to eat less, but we still eat the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm always ravenous, so I'm always that? like, when does, the, when does the appetite start decreasing? Yeah. <laughs> well, so uh, how do you... How do you deal with this as, right. as a woman who's approaching this midlife stage mm -hmm. and, and wanting to avoid the weight gain or maybe wanting to combat right. some of the gain weight they have gained? How do you, how do, you do that? Well, <laughs> let me count the ways. <laughs> you hydrate. Right. You, you know, you drink two liters of water a day. Mm -hmm. That right there knocks off a certain degree of appetite mm -hmm. because there's a confusion between hunger and thirst in the body sometimes. Right. And, yeah. you know, sometimes that happens to me. I haven't managed to drink my water and then all of a sudden I'm eating and I think, oh, wait, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I didn't really drink my thirsty. water. Yeah. 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 So I try to keep a big bottle on my desk and I make myself finish it before lunchtime. I have tea with my lunch. I'm drinking tea. Tea counts. Coffee actually counts. Oh, good. Yeah. And so, and then with dinner, you know, I, you just try to want to get your two liters in a day right. for women. Right. That helps a lot. Um, the other thing is really just thinking about your portions. And I think when you're in restaurants, I think that's the hardest mm -hmm. part. Because you're in a restaurant and you get a big portion and the tendency is to, eat, is to eat it all. So someone might say to me, well, I had the salmon and I had the vegetable. You know, I had, uh, it all looked right, but the salmon was this big. Mm -hmm. We need this big. Uh -huh. You know, you right. need about that Size much. Of a palm. Yeah, right. that's, you, you don't need that much no. just because it's salmon. Right. So, uh, yeah, and, the, and or they think they're paying for it. They should eat it. Yes, that's that's you know? true too. So <laughs> and we're not in control of what the restaurant puts in the food all the time. That's right. We don't really mm. know what they've added. That's right. To make things taste extra good. Why does your right. salmon taste better than mine? Yeah. So what did you put in it? <laughs> butter. Yeah, yeah butter. <laughs> that's exactly. really a child that's secret. Ingredient. Yeah, it's <laughs> butter with everything. Yeah. Yeah. As butter. soon as yeah. I have my clients eat out less, and I if yeah. they're eating out five days a week, I have them cut down to like one or two. Weight starts to miraculously oh, yeah. come off. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I, it's I, a miracle. Yeah, I had a client who was a, a, a professional woman who retired. And and she was doing all these networking lunches, and as soon as she retired, she dropped ten pounds. Yeah. I mean, it, it was those <laughs> networking right. lunches. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. All uh, the temptation around and, you and yeah. then all the or just events, not, the birthdays, mm -hmm. and the or just having, not knowing what they put in the food. Right. Having said that, you can dine out and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it can be done, but it requires the M word, moderation. Not merry, not moderate. Mindfulness, uh -huh. mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I have a number of clients who's been who've been very successful with this. Before they go to the restaurant, they go online and they see what's there and they decide what they're going to have before mm -hmm. they go in mm -hmm. and how much they're going to eat. And so, I, I think you 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 want to be thinking about when you're going to a special event, how you're going to handle it, right? So well, that you're not just yeah. and you know some people like to eat a little bit before they go to a party mm -hmm. so that they don't stuff themselves. And some people prefer to go there kind of prepared so that they can enjoy the food. Right. Depends on, you can go either way. Right. Depends on you, how you, how you think you might handle it. Right. Um, what else can women well, over 40? you know, I was going to add, because when I yeah. was raised, I'm, I'm, you know, from a European background, and it was a standard. It was like, 
we always had wine on the table. Yes. It was like your water. You mm-hmm. had wine. You had a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. What is that in relation to women now, like having a glass of wine with, with their meal at night? Is yeah. that a bad thing? You know, the wine question is, is very tricky because in terms of breast cancer, uh, alcohol is a risk factor for breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my wine. Me too. <laughs> but I'm trying to I'm trying to dial it back. Right. Because it, it's I do have a family history of breast cancer. Oh. And um, yeah, there's the whole subject of hormone replacement, uh, and which I think is something. It's another. So it's not my area of expertise. So I'm going to leave that to the doctors. Right. <laughs> not going to get into that. But I, I, I do think in terms of alcohol and breast cancer, we know that no amount of alcohol is, is good. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, in terms of type 2 diabetes, alcohol increases insulin resistance. Again, mm. not good. Right. But hey, let's have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we need to be moderate. I mean, right. the, the, the recommendation is not more than one glass of wine for women and two for men, or drinks, one for women, one for women two right. for men. However, the, the is recommendation that daily, is daily, weekly? Daily. Okay. However, the, and you, don't, you can't stockpile it and save yeah. it all up and have right. six it's on like, oh, a whole bottle on Saturday. Right, can't no. do that. <laughs> uh, but but I, I think they also say that if you haven't started, don't start. Right. right. Yeah. So listen, I started, and I, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to, you know, keep it, keep it to a minimum. But I, mean, I love my glass of wine. I know, me too. Yeah. And well, I find for people trying to lose weight, as soon as I tell them, like, just see what happens if you don't drink wine for this month. Yeah. Boom, five pounds or ten pounds, oh, depending on the sure. size can of them. Be, yeah. Can be, can make a difference. Oh. Can make yeah. a difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. women Absolutely. who drink a glass a night and they yeah. stop that, they try yeah. that for one month. It's like yeah. holy shit. Then they drink the wine again, comes right back. Yeah. Like yeah. two days later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two bottles later. Yeah. And what about drinking wine at night and then the sleep patterns? Oh, are they affected? Bad. Well, that's the other thing is the, the later you drink it, the more alcohol disrupts sleep patterns. Right. And so with a lower level of estrogen, again, I'm getting out of my area of expertise. Right. But, you know, as the estrogen falls, sometimes sleep patterns can be disturbed. Well, that's, a, that's definitely the truth. I mean, I'm yeah. experiencing that. Yeah. You know. so, so that's where drinking alcohol late at night, the later you drink it, you've got to have it at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Start huh. drinking it in the morning it's and true. say, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so. well, then there's the, I, I, I'm a big believer. Well, you know, I'm a believer in intermittent fasting and I love it. I, I it's, uh, I, I, my blood sugar is you know, excellent and I have a history of diabetes in my family, but also I think that's even one step better than that is doing it along with circadian rhythms. Mm-hmm. And so then if you know that you have to cut off, and this is an old thing that our grandparents used to tell us is not to eat past mm-hmm. seven or eight o'clock at night, whatever mm-hmm. their particular cutoff right, time right, was. Right. So if that's also going to take effect for your alcohol, Yes. So not just eating, yeah. but cut off your last meal and drink mm-hmm. at 7 or 8 p.m. Then you don't resume again until your breakfast the next day. That's right. been really great to be shown, not just for the weight loss, mm-hmm. but also for blood sugar sensitivity. Right. right. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, Jill, because I think it, it can be good to keep your eating with an eight hour, in an eight-hour period. Because some people eat, you know, wake up in the morning, even if they overweight ate the night before, and just automatically eat their breakfast. Mm-hmm. You might not need to do that. Oh, that's me. Yeah. I love and eating. You might want to wait till you get a little hungry. <laughs> yeah. I always think it's good to have something before lunch because then you're starving and then it's a trigger to yes, overeat. Yes. Yeah. Um, but in terms of insulin resistance, you definitely want to not eat anything three or four hours before you go to bed. So it kind of makes sense if you at least don't eat anything after, you know, like a 12-hour fast, maybe a 15-hour fast. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of just makes good common sense. But it, it certainly is helpful in terms of insulin resistance. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, it's helpful with weight control. Now, I did attend a, a major lecture about this at my last um, Academy of Nutrition convention which is was in Washington DC this last year and and there were two scientists uh, up on the stage one was presenting all the reasons all the scientific literature for intermittent fasting the other one was presenting all the scientific literature against it who are these doctors okay so I, I don't remember have the it names? in my I don't but I can give it to you. Oh, okay. And and so but the point is that you can find research either way and I don't like to necessarily just jump on a bandwagon and pass that information out to my clients, but I do think it doesn't hurt uh, uh, unless it triggers an eating disorder and, mm-hmm. and erratic behavior. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's worth a try to stop eating at night because that's the biggest problem I see for many people with weight issues is night eating. Yeah. Well, yeah. they can do it in the morning, they can do it at lunch, but after dinner, they're rummaging around the kitchen looking yeah, for something to right. eat. That's the hard thing. So you could, it's easy to say fast, but for a lot of people, that 
habit is really hard to break. So how do you break that habit of night eating? Right. What do you do? The same yeah. way you break the habit of not eating a scone for breakfast, <laughs> I guess. Well, it, you just it have is, to want it. It is practice. It, yeah. It is the same way you do your squats. Okay. Yeah. You want it. Yeah. If you want to have a desired result, you right. know. But it, it, it's also, again, the mindfulness. Yeah. The, okay, this is something I haven't brought up yet, but this is major. Ready okay. for this one? Okay. Yes. Control the environment. Remove the triggers from the environment. So if you have a bag of of cookies in your cupboard, it might be too hard for you to leave them alone. Yeah. Get rid of them. Right. See if your family will cooperate. Yeah. And get rid of the the pretzels or the chips or right. whatever it is that's calling your name at mm. night. Yeah. This is where I go wrong with Jim all the time. I say he loves to go and buy. Oh, it's on sale. Ten for ten dollars. You, <laughs> you gotta buy ten. I'm like, no, just buy yeah. what we need because the more food that's in the refrigerator that's or true. the cupboard, the more food you're gonna well, eat. The more Stop temptation. going to Costco. Yeah, Costco. <laughs> I would say is one of the biggest reasons for Americans being over more. <laughs> oh my weight. God, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I know. Brian Wansink's in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. But he was the first person. The guy from Cornell mm -hmm. from the eating yeah, lab. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. He's in a lot of trouble. So, he, but he is the first person that brought me. You know, that he was the first person I heard talk about um, portion distortion. First person I heard mm -hmm. talk about the smaller plates. Mm -hmm. And the first person who I heard about his study. And you know, we're going back ten years now mm -hmm. about when people go to a movie theater and they eat popcorn. Yeah. If you even if the popcorn is stale, if you give them a large, they will study. eat more. Of course, mm -hmm. you'll eat so, what you're given. Right? Whatever. So poor guy's in a he's in a ton of trouble for like fudging stuff. <laughs> But yeah. that is so true because yeah, yeah. you know, because you always order a small at the movie theaters. Yes, I do. Jim and I share a medium. Yeah. But and when no it, butter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what's well, not really, what is that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> it's not butter. But when we order a large, even yeah. if it goes stale and it's crappy at the bottom, right. I still wind up right. eating more. Yeah. So Yeah, you know, I have a movie routine. Um, uh, I, I, I just don't eat popcorn at the movies. Oh, it, no? it really annoys me, all that noise. And I, oh, yeah? And, and... My routine is we tend to go to the movies on Fridays around like four or five, and then we have dinner afterwards. So our dinner is uh, at, at six or six thirty. Oh, yeah. So that I'm works. not going to eat popcorn. Yeah. I, I'll spoil my dinner. I get tempted by the smell yeah. alone, but I don't yeah. like it buttered or anything. It's a habit, yeah. you know. It's just a habit. And Americans and I have a number a girlfriend I go um, with who's um, uh, French, and they she would never eat popcorn. Yeah, the really? they just never no, do that. No, they don't do that in France. No. 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 Well, I don't speak French, so I wouldn't go to a movie theater there anyway. <laughs> right. But you yeah. know what I do? And I, I know that the movie theaters frown on this. So, you know, if you're a movie theater manager, sorry. I bring my own. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, I stop off at Trader Joe's and I get like the smart popcorn, stick uh -huh. it in my knapsack and take it into the theater. Jill, you are too clever for me. I'll tell <laughs> you. You don't do that. <laughs> Uh, oh come on! I'm it's not controlling the environment. I, it is, but <laughs> I'm not as I, I run out of the I I might run out of the door with something. Yeah, you know, an apple or an orange. I run out of the door with something, but I wouldn't probably stop. I, I don't know. But I do. I chaos, stop over the know. Trader Joe's, yeah, grab my own great. stuff, or yeah. make my own, or I and I bring my own water because I'm not paying. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not spending four fifty. Yeah. For a ninety nine cent bottle of water, right. stick it in my yeah. purse. Yeah. Um. So back to women and hormones. You yes. were talking about how hormones are also created somewhat in our fat cells. Yeah. But doesn't the loss of estrogen slow down our metabolism and make us gain weight? You know, I'm not really sure the mechanism of how that, I know that the metabolism slows down uh, and, and that the, the lower estrogen level creates all kinds of mood changes and physical changes and changes in where you deposit fat. Yeah, more into the middle. Yeah, so, so more the way that men deposit fat. So, um, uh, yeah, I think it, it all changes. So the question is, what do you do about it? Mm -hmm. And and what I think you do is you be mindful and you say to yourself, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I, I I used to eat this way, just can't do that anymore. But sometimes you have that breakdown because you're having that hormonal day and you're just like, yeah, uh, you know, like right, must right. have dark chocolate or something, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. I think you have it. Yeah. Okay, so go for it. So I try to offer it's, something healthier, like I'll go bittersweet chocolate yeah. instead of regular milk. Great, you know? great idea. Yeah. I mean, I I think that you can't have everything you want, no. but yeah. you must have some treats. You must have so, something. <laughs> so the trick is to find a way to work in your trigger foods in sort of a safe environment. Right. So maybe you don't want to have a whole bag of cookies in your house, but maybe you want to go to the market and get one cookie. Right. So that you have your little you have your fix yeah. and and you carry on with it right. without exposing yourself to something that's going to send you over the deep end. Right. So what we're saying is the cold hard truth is that as our hormones change and as we get older, we do tend to store more fat. And I did take a course on this on hormones and storing yes. body fat. And yes. there's a whole lot of hormones. So we didn't talk about cortisol. We didn't talk about insulin, mm -hmm. which are... A, 
definitely problems for women as we get older because we get more stressed either mm -hmm. because our kids leave the house mm -hmm. or we have elderly parents to take care of right. or we sell our companies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'm not sure or what, all of them yeah. all Combined, of them. I'm not right. sure what or, or just right. or just walking down the street yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. so our cortisol levels might yeah. be going up yes. and then uh, that can also trigger so cortisol will trigger an insulin release mm -hmm. and then insulin is it, it's, it's an obesogenic uh, hormone it actually it, it causes us to gain weight do you want right. to do you want to talk about insulin well only in that um insulin is something that we also need yeah because mm -hmm. insulin we would die without to, it yes yeah insulin helps the, the glucose to get inside the cell yeah so so but what what i think is most important in terms of warding off type 2 diabetes and this kind of thing is exercise and portion control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and eating whole foods, mm -hmm. not eating those processed snack foods. Mm -hmm. and, and all those, the, the bars and the, and the crackers, and the, even though they're, you know, um, might be organic or even just, or whole grain, just, just trying to eat more like the sprouted kind of breads right. or grains. Right. And, and, um, and, and nuts and seeds. You know, I, I, my latest favorite appetizer when I entertain because I don't like to overfeed people. Right. I like your kitchen, and, so we oh, may be coming over. Oh, hey, there's a really good uh, video on my Smart Eating show that I did after when I was doing a dinner party. I'm wearing a pink dress. Okay. okay? And uh, so you can find it. It's on Instagram as well as uh, okay. YouTube. Yeah. And But it, it's uh, how, when I throw a dinner party, I, may, I, I don't set up my guests to overeat. Uh, yeah, that's got to yeah. be... Yeah, I think that's important. Without looking because I like love you don't have things. enough food. Because my Guilty. husband... Guilty. My husband comes Guilty. from this yeah. huge family, and yeah. they, he had seven se seven siblings, and yeah. their dinner was always like, you know, there was a yeah. chicken, there was a fish, there was a meat. Right. Uh, every yeah, night yeah. there was tons. Right. right, a feast. So when they come, or when mm -hmm. we have company, he's always like, make sure you have enough or more, because yeah. having less doesn't, you know, doesn't look good. <laughs> and get I come from it. a family where you get, get over one it. plate, Time and you're done. Change. Yeah. They, they can't. They, it, it is cultural. It's that's a cultural a, thing. That's a big problem. And yeah. so a, a reverse yeah. of what I come from. You yeah. know? I come from, hey, you get one plate, you're done. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a happy medium. I mean, I I, 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 I would... So I what's would, your I favorite appetizer that you would serve? Well, my favorite appetizer is um, pumpkin seeds, and then I toast them in a little bit of oil. Oh, yeah. And just put a really bit of good salt on them, right? And and serve them with you know give people a, you know it's a little napkin and use these pumpkin seeds and people love them. Yeah, wow, they're tasty. You don't need cheese and crackers. Right. That's yeah. Dinner. Yeah. Like come on. Yeah. You know, we don't need all that. So yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things I do. You make me overeat. I make you overeat. Oh, okay, girls. <laughs> well, now let's not fight. <laughs> oh, when she comes over, I'm still my working off last Thursday's sushi. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about sushi. Yeah. Oh God. So she's the new McDonald's. Oh my Is God! Is it really? I always think I'm eating Sugar, healthier. Sugar, fat, salt, and people and it don't. It has a halo effect. Right. People don't it has really a halo effect. effect. It's healthy. Yeah. Well, the white rice can't be that okay. good. Okay. White rice, it. vegetables. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wait, hold on. That's it's because they actually put sugar in the rice. No, I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all those sauces, like katsuya, forget it. It's oh, like yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well get a Big Mac. Yeah. And people think yeah. they're they think they're eating healthy and, when they're eating sushi. And people overorder. Oh yeah. They overeat. And it's expensive. What about the edamame, though? The edamame is good. Okay. So here's, if you want to do sushi, yeah. here's what you do. Okay. Because I have this problem with my family. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Sushi. <laughs> like, okay. You didn't have it and growing then, up in Iowa. And I said, right. And then I say, but this, this, this. And my son says, mom, you say that every time. I still want to go to sushi. Yeah. Okay. So what I do is I, I order the edamame to start. And then I always look for a salad. Now, some sushi places don't have You're a right. salad. Yeah. But I like to try to choose the places that do. That's my vote. Oh, mm -hmm. We're in Beverly Hills. They have salads. Yes. You just kind of yes, look. <laughs> that's right. And then I, I usually order one, one, one uh, like, cut roll. I don't right. even know how they're yeah. called. Right. One, a roll. One, yeah, right. one. Yeah. One. So I'll eat a big, a nice salad with one cut roll and the, and edamame. the edamame. Yeah, and, and that kind of works for me. It does too. I always yeah. get extra edamame as when yeah. I'm having guests. Right, right. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just, yeah, I just don't want to keep going and going and going. No, yeah. and, well, the yeah, other yeah. solution is sashimi. Don't get the rice. Yeah, and then there's the mercury issue. Yeah, oh, there's something about that okay. raw fish. Okay, so but. yeah, so there is a there is also a video on I saw on, that on how yeah. how to not get too much mercury. Right, I right, didn't. Right. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, people like that. Yeah, one. Yeah, that's a good one. Right. So yeah, you're not a fan of the sashimi. Well, it's not that I'm not. You want to try? I think it's the the five S's, the the fish that aren't high in mercury. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The smaller, the smaller fish. fish yeah. Right. Salmon, yeah. shrimp. Right. Um, Salmon sardines. sushi is a bit yeah. too fishy for me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
But shrimp I'll do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so scallops. One, scallops yeah. are good. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, one reason I do uh, mm-hmm. recommend the sashimi is not just to get away from the rice, but mm-hmm. because another thing is as we are dealing with the sarcopenia, which is just yeah. a fancy way of saying age-related muscle loss, yeah. which is just it's a nice way. Oh, I have sarcopenia. What's that? Is it contagious? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I have women try to up their protein yeah. a bit and that'll fill them up more right, right. which is fine I, I yeah you, you need that protein but the thing that what also fills you up is is, is fiber yeah so you're getting white rice and fish there's yeah. no fiber there's no fiber so that's there. why yeah. you at least need the edamame yeah uh, yeah well you know but, and i avoid the soy sauce because that's just sodium yeah, and that yeah. bloats yeah that's yeah. the other thing you wake up in the middle of the night with yeah. a salt hangover i know what water I water oh I, my god absolutely and, and salt is so bad for us right that to excess now when i say that i'm having my pumpkin seeds and i put a little salt on it okay no problem that's but a, that's yeah. different than going to a oh you're putting sea salt on them yeah yeah some kind of salt okay. i have himalayans i have mm-hmm. quite a few different salts right. i like and yeah. i like a salt a delicious salt yeah it's nice kosher salt yeah the big thick crystals because yeah. when you have big those big thick crystals you don't need to use as, as much, much. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Less All right, more. one other thing. Let's yes. do one more topic. Okay. Uh, women uh, tend to replace the sweets that they crave with all of the different types of artificial sweeteners. Oh. So, Mary, artificial sweeteners, go. Well, listen, <laughs> hey, again, not all things for all people. I just don't like to be dogmatic. This is what happens when you're over 40 or 50 or even where I am. You you stop giving this all or nothing kind of advice. Mm-hmm. No artificial sweeteners. No, I, I just don't do that. Do I consume artificial sweeteners? No, I don't like them. I, I, I don't. I don't. Like I don't. stevia. Yes, I just don't. No. Are they considered uh, yeah. artificial though, or are they you know, natural? I, I don't like them. Okay. I just don't want to go there. Right. You know, are they processed? Yeah. yeah. But what about stevia it, because it comes from a plant? Yeah. Okay. Roots. So sugar comes from a plant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the stevia. I think it's fine. I, uh, I, I don't think it's horrible. But when I see people who put five Splendas in their coffee, the problem with that is it rat it's up what your palate is requiring to experience sweetness okay so then the next time you eat a piece of cake you want a lot of cake so it's an addiction it, it's yeah. it's a it's an increased tolerance mm-hmm. let's just not, i wouldn't know if that it's an addiction but it's an increased tolerance for what whereas even with salt okay so if you're used to something that's really salty it doesn't phase you but right. if you haven't had a lot of salt and right. then you go to a restaurant you get this beautiful salad and you it's so salty mm-hmm. like i, I have right. to send it back right so it is again changing those food preferences so that we don't need so much sweet. Yeah, right. so people need to wean off the artificial sweeteners yes. because they actually are sweeter than sugar. They are right. So yeah, so people who drink diet coke, let's just say, uh, I, I I like to see where they are. You know, if they're drinking three a day, let's cut back to one a day. If they're drinking one a day, let's cut back to one every other day. And what I really think is most helpful in getting people off of Diet Coke is hydration. So if you preemptively drink your two watt liters of water a day, you're not craving a Diet Coke. You figure that when you crave that Diet Coke, it's when you're really dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, a Diet Coke sounds really mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you're not well hydrated. Right. You're well hydrated and you're drinking all your tea Somehow you're forgetting about that diet coke. Right. You're not thinking about right. it. Right. Right. Yeah. So. So you don't really have a big problem with um, with some artificial sweeteners or I a little bit. I didn't say that. I, I I just I think again it's kind of like the intermittent fasting. There's research on both sides. Okay. And there you know, is. Okay. And and, and, and uh, there's research on both sides. I think the jury is out. I don't think there's anything definitive that it causes cancer or because I've seen people who've switched. Um, who I remember I had a, 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 a woman I saw years ago who drank a lot of Diet Coke and as soon as she stopped it she gained 10 pounds okay but she was using that as sort of an appetite oh, to fill her up yeah because yeah. there's a little caffeine in there right, which will right. suppress the appetite exactly so you know I, I would have liked to see her drink green tea yes. and switch over so you, you sometimes even like yeah switching one beverage for another so do I promote artificial sweeteners no do I think they're a great evil no Okay. But what do you I, I, use to sweeten? What's your preference, personally? A little honey, a little maple syrup. Yeah, maple syrup. Yeah. That's what I use. Yeah. Yeah. Blackstrap organic yeah, molasses. molasses. Love yeah. that. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but... I like I don't ha- I I offer my clients tea in my office, and I remember uh, someone who who I've seen for a while who say, "Do you have any do you have any Splenda for my tea?" <laughs> <laughs> say, no, <laughs> but, but, but what happened with her was that she started, she was forced in her, in my office to drink her tea without sweetener. And she 
eventually learn to drink her tea without sweetener. It's sort of like the first time. It's like, oh, my God. But then you get used to it. Right. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, I used to drink sugar in my coffee years ago. Wow. And, and I would never now. Right. So, again, you can change your food preferences. Sure. You want to give yourself six weeks. Okay? You start the new behavior and you practice it. Just give yourself that six weeks. Right. And then things start to shift. So yeah, the main, let's do that. our top, what would be the top five tips that people should try to shift? So, you know, we got away with a lot in our mm-hmm. 20s and 30s, mm-hmm. um, 40s and 50s. It's mm-hmm. a different story. We do have to be more militant if we mm-hmm. want to look good. I mean, right. you know, I mean, yeah, if you, I yeah. would think most fine-tuned females want to look pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah. If, but if you don't want to look good, it's yeah. fine. Some people don't care. Yeah. Uh, but if you care about how you look, you're going to have to tighten up some things yeah. uh, the way you eat. So your top five things for women over 40. I would say, first of all, uh, this is your department, Jill, try to do something active every day. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't use to ex- exercise every day. You didn't? Uh, not always, all my life. No, mm. you know, you have a child, you're busy, oh, you're working, oh, yeah. you have business. You yeah. know, no, it's hard. You Your time. life's complicated. Yeah. But to try to do something active every day. Okay. Um, I would say number two, get mindful of your portions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, instead of you know, eat one less slice of pizza and, mm-hmm. and have one extra glass of wa- you know, a cup of vegetables. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and so, so portions. And then I would say really work on eating more vegetables. And maybe that means having one meal as a, a large salad a day or some kind of work, work on finding delicious ways to get your vegetables. Mm-hmm. So, so you're eating that first, right? Cause you love it. Right. Not because it's punishment, right? You gotta <laughs> love it or you're never going to stay right. with it. Right. Okay, that's three. What else? What else? Um, those refined grains. Get rid of the trigger foods in your house. Right. Mm-hmm. Get rid of no those trigger temptations. foods. If there's something in there. Some people, it's nuts. Yeah. Some people just can't control themselves around right. nuts. I get like that sometimes. So, yeah. so, but find another, you know, uh, the substitute for your trigger foods. Like, I love dates at night. Mm-hmm. And I, I put out a beautiful plate. I, and I like to give meals a sense of occasion. That's mm-hmm. my number five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give meals a sense of occasion. Sit down, light a candle, put out a cloth mm. napkin, it, 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 serve the food, even if you're all by yourself. Right. Just make it a sense of occasion. Right. So that eating doesn't have this continuum of snacking. So right. there's a beginning and an end. Right. And a sense of, you know, mindfulness. Yeah. And then the biggest problem you see in where do women go wrong after their forties? Is it all those five things, or is there something else that you see? No, I think I think those that kind of I think that I think that covers it. I think the other message I would have is that it's very easy to gain weight, and it is very hard to lose it. Oh yeah. So so sometimes I'll tell people when they come in, let's just stop gaining. Let's not worry about losing weight right now. Let's just stop gaining. Mm-hmm. That's a success because right. right now you're gaining a pound a month. Right. And that's 10 pounds a year. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's stop that gaining. Right. And, and so I, I like that. And then see what you can tolerate. See what you can tolerate. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are other deeper issues, being unhappy or lonely mm-hmm. or stressed. Well, and emotional eating. Emotional eating. Right. And so, so those things all underlying things need to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. But food structure can be, and meal planning and, and, and pleasure around food can help. Mm-hmm. So you want to have foods and meal patterns that work for you and not against you. Right. Well, a lot of women in their 40s and 50s complain about stress. So what, what do you recommend for stress eating? Get a dog is my suggestion. I think, no, I think all those that, things yeah. I just described, all those very for the stress. Those, those, those are all the things Something that you do for stress. Something with the hormonal changes also increase anxiety. And that causes the sleeplessness and the, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if it's... Yeah. I mean, I think all those things I just addressed right. are, are... Are there comfort foods that help relieve that? Again, that goes back to what are what you enjoy. So right. it's a comfort food for me might be different than the comfort right. food food right. for you. And as food preferences change, that can shift as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Listen, you can do it. Stay positive. Mm-hmm. It, it, is, it is completely doable right. to stay fit and, and in good shape. Well into your 40s and 50s and 60s and beyond. Beyond, definitely. Go, girl. (laughs) (laughs) The only theme of the day. The the one thing that I would add then on my expertise is if you are stressed out, you you will not be hungry if you're doing a high-intensity interval workout, if you're running, if you're hiking. You'll be hungry a couple hours later, Mm -hmm. but if you have a stress issue, you've got to, like you said in the beginning, you have to get up and move. Mm -hmm. And that will oftentimes be the the one thing that will alleviate the stress Mm -hmm. where you don't have to to go to the kitchen because I think so many of us just get drawn to the kitchen or drawn to the cupboard 
right. and we've put something in our mouth to try to make us feel better. Maybe it's for the dopamine or the serotonin response that makes us feel calm. But if we can just exchange that by getting up, doing some jumping jacks, taking your dog for a walk, You're right. that's what I feel. I feel always when I do my workout with you afterwards, I don't have an appetite. That's right. Ben always comes in, what yeah. do you want for dinner? I'm You're like, like I'm I don't not know. hungry anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. well, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank Mary, you for coming. You. Yes. Tell everyone how we can find you or how they can find you. Oh, gee. MaryDonkerSloat.com. Oh, I can sing a song. D O N K E R S L O O T. Donkerslope. <laughs> That's cute. Um, I haven't done that for years. Wow. Uh, MaryDonkerSloat.com. Smart Eating Show. Smart Eating, Smart show. eating show on YouTube, YouTube. and mm-hmm. Instagram. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, well, thanks, Mary. I'm so glad you were here to we share great all of your so insights. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Right. Thank you, Anita. Thank you very it was, much. It was really fun. All right, Fine Tuned Females. Before we wrap up, Anita and I are just going to talk really quickly about a product we love. You don't have one, but I, I do. I have a product I love today. I, I have used it three times now on this show, and I've used a product called... Um, uh, flawless, hey flawless, or flawless, flawless you. It's the new oh, powder. Yeah, that's from Benefit. From Benefit, the right. new powder. Yeah. And the last couple of times I wore it, you told me how good it looked. Yes, it is. It's really yeah, so uh, because it's a light based. Powder. Yes. Yeah. So the flawless powder, I have just been having an amazing time mm-hmm. with because normally I get shiny. Yeah. And this is the first time. Well, there you go. Three weeks I've <laughs> used it. Tata has said how good my skin looks. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with the it's benefit. It's working. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's my little. That's my little product of the week. All right, fine tuned females. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here on the Thank show. Thank you. Please leave us some comments below. You can like and subscribe to our channel. And also, if you're watching us on YouTube, you're gonna get some recipes from Tata workouts mm-hmm. and also. Also fashion tips. Woo. Yep. <laughs> we'll All see right. you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.